Hey, praise the Lord. It is I, Brother Clinton, once again, and you are back on the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth, as Jesus Christ commanded. Praise the Lord. You know, when I hold up this Bible and I say the Word of God, it's for a reason. This book isn't the Word of God. A book isn't the Word of God. A book is a book. It's paper. If God allowed, somebody could grab it out of my hand and throw it in the fire and burn it. But the words that are in this book cannot be burned up. The words that are in this book are the words of God. And so when I hold up this book and I say the word of God, I'm not referring to the book. I'm referring to the words that are written in the book. This book is the Holy Bible, King James Version. If you speak English, this is the word of God. And in this book it is written, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. So it stands to reason, then, if that's true, which it is, that if your Bible says something different than what my Bible says, then both of our Bibles cannot possibly be given by inspiration of God. They also cannot possibly be profitable for correction, for doctrine, for reproof, or for instruction in righteousness. If your Bible says something different than my Bible, then which one do we use for correction, or instruction in righteousness, or doctrine, or reproof? They can't both be God's word if they don't say the same thing. So for that reason, as I've stressed many times, for those of us who speak English, the Holy Bible, King James Version, is the word of God. It wasn't given to us by James, the king of England. It wasn't given to us by the Catholic Church or by the Jesuits of Rome. It was given to us by God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, not by inspiration of the Catholic Church, not by inspiration of the king of England, by inspiration of God. Praise the Lord. The reason I've said this and stressed it in the beginning of this video is because there's something that's been going on for a, a very long time and something that has been presented to me many times throughout several years that I've been serving the Lord Jesus Christ in the last 25 years or so. And more than once today, wherein people have written to me or communicated with me referring to the Son of God by the name Yahshua. Yahshua. Y-A-H-S-H-U-A. And I'm here to tell you, as a Christian, as a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, called by God, not by any man, that the name Yahshua isn't in the scripture, and it has nothing to do with the Son of God. Now, I know that there is a word that is in the scripture, in the English Holy Bible, one time in Psalm 68, 4, and that word is Yah, J-A-H. And I'm pronouncing the J as if it were a Y, because that's how it's pronounced in this particular case. Yah, okay? Yah is a shortened form of the name Yehovah. And Yehovah is translated in the Holy Bible into the English language with the word Lord in all capital letters. And it is translated that way on purpose for good reason and that from God. And it is translated that way in every, sin, in every instance in the Old Testament except for seven times, which is also on purpose, the purpose of God for a very good reason. That's a whole different subject, and I'm not going to get into that right now. But the name Yah is a shortened form of the name Yehovah, and it is transliterated one time in the scripture as Yah, J-A-H. The other times in the scripture, it's written actually 48 times in the Hebrew Old Testament in 44 different uh, verses. And it's the rest of the time it's translated as Lord in all capital letters, just as the, the regular form Yehovah is translated as Lord in all capital letters. However, there's a lot of people that think that the Son of God is to be addressed with the name Yahshua because they have subjected themselves to the deception of theologians and supposed Hebrew scholars who have told them that the Bible has been translated incorrectly and that if they will go to the original Hebrew manuscripts, okay, and for those of you who know me, you know why I do this, and if you don't, hang on a minute and I'll explain it for you. But they, they tell people, for those of us who go to the original Hebrew manuscripts, we can find out that the Holy Bible was not correctly translated and, and that the, the actual name of the Son of God is Yahshua. Okay? And the reason that people believe that is because they have been deceived by the serpent's theologians. Because the Word of God doesn't contain the name Yahshua. 
The name Yahshua is not written in the Holy Bible anywhere. Not even one time. And so the reason I did this is because when I said the original Hebrew manuscripts, is because of this great deception that is going forth, whereby people think, people really literally think, that some guy on YouTube has the original Hebrew manuscripts. Or they think that some guy who wrote an article that they can read on the internet has access to the original Hebrew manuscripts. Well, I'm going to tell you something. They don't. <laughs> I can guarantee you something. I can guarantee you something. You, I don't know who you are on the other side of this camera, and it doesn't make any difference who you are. You have never seen the original Hebrew manuscripts, nor have you ever watched a video by anyone or read an article or a book by anyone who has seen the original Hebrew manuscripts. Now, there are, there are or there were original Hebrew manuscripts in existence, which is, you know, there was the, the, the Textus Receptus is a group of over 5,000 a collection of over 5,000 different manuscripts from which this Bible was translated. But you haven't seen them, and you don't know anybody who has seen them, and you haven't watched a video by or read a book by or an article by anyone who has ever seen them. And so whenever anybody presents to you the, the phrase, the original Hebrew manuscripts, they're lying to you because they have never seen the original Hebrew manuscripts, and they don't know anybody who has ever seen the original Hebrew manuscripts. Those people are sent to you from the serpent to lie to you and to take the name of Jesus Christ out of your mouth. Now, we're speaking English, so the name of the Lord, the Almighty God, is Jesus Christ. That name is written over 900 times in the New Testament of our Holy Bible. It was first revealed in Exodus chapter 14, verse 30, at least as far as I know. Maybe it was before then, but as far as I know, it was first um, um, presented to us in the scripture in Exodus 14.30 when it says the Lord saved Israel that day. The Lord saved. Yehovah Yasha. Okay, Yehovah is the name that by which God revealed himself to Moses and Yasha is a Hebrew word that means the Savior or having salvation. And when you put Yehovah and Yasha together, it is Yehoshua. Yehoshua. And of course the shortened form for Yehoshua is Yeshua. And that is how you say the name of God if you are speaking Hebrew to a Hebrew-speaking person. Yeshua. Okay? But if you're speaking English to an English-speaking person, then when you're speaking the name of God, you say it this way. Jesus. That's the name of God. If you're speaking English, that's the name of God. There is absolutely no good reason, if you're speaking to someone in English, to change the language that you're speaking when you speak the name of God. Now, if you want to call God by his Hebrew name, Yeshua, you're welcome to do so, but there's no good reason for you to do so. And I'm going to explain to you why I say that, because the apostles of Jesus Christ, who were Hebrew men, they spoke Hebrew and also Greek, they, when they were writing Greek letters in the Greek language to Greek-speaking people, when they were writing these letters in Greek, the letters in the New Testament, they, when they came to God's name, they didn't change the language that they were writing in and, and write God's name in Hebrew. Why? Because they weren't writing in Hebrew to Hebrew-speaking people. They were writing in Greek to Greek-speaking people. So they wrote the name of God in Greek. Jesus. I-E-S-O-U-S. -S -S. Jesus. That's how you say the name of God in the Greek language. So when these Hebrew men, who spoke Greek as a second language, were writing to Greek-speaking people in the Greek language, they did not say the name of God in Hebrew. They said the name of God in Greek because they were writing in Greek to Greek-speaking people. And so that's why when we read the New Testament of our Bible, the name of God is written for us in English. Because the way that you translate the Greek word Jesus into English is Jesus. Okay. Now, in the older Bibles, before the, the letter J was commonly used in the English language, like in the Geneva Bible, then you can see, or in the original King James, 1611, you can see that the name of, of, our, of our, pardon me, that the name of our Lord is written as Jesus, I-E-S-U-S, or I-E-S-O-U-S, the same as it was in Greek. 
However, and I don't know when the letter J came to, to, came to be used in the English language, and it doesn't really matter. Okay, but now we call the name of the Lord Jesus. That's how it's said, and that's how it's spelled. And if you want to say his name Yeshua in Hebrew, then you can, but there's no good reason for you to do so if you're speaking to English-speaking people. And those people that think that they're you know, they're, that they've gained some knowledge from these supposed Hebrew scholars and they, they use Hebrew words like Ruach and, you know, and, and Yahshua and Yahuwah. And, you know, they say Ruach instead of spirit, of course, because Ruach is the Hebrew word that means spirit. Um, but, you know, they think that they are, in their pridefulness, they think that they are um, gaining more respect for themselves by calling things by Hebrew names than actually just speaking English. And when you do that, when you do that, when you're speaking to somebody in English about the things of God and you start injecting Hebrew words into the conversation, you might think that everybody's going to think that you're really smart. But what you're actually doing is just causing confusion because the person that you're speaking to speaks English, not Hebrew. And so they're not going to understand what you're talking about. And even if they do understand what they're talking about, they're going to say, wow, this guy or this, this woman really isn't very bright because we're speaking English. They should be speaking to me in English. Okay, the Hebrew, the, the English word for spirit is spirit. So why would we be talking about the spirit and all of a sudden was and in and, and, and English and just insert the Hebrew word ruach? You know, wow, the ruach came upon me the other day and I was just, why would we do that? It doesn't make any sense. You know, it doesn't make any sense unless you're speaking to someone in Hebrew. So those of us who speak English, for those of us who speak English, the name of the Lord, the Almighty God, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, is Jesus Christ. Okay, There is no Yahshua, there is no Yahuwah, and there is no Yahushua. Those names are not in the scripture. God never uttered those names to anybody, to any of his prophets ever. Those names don't pertain to him. And people that are calling God by those names don't know him. Look, let me share from you a passage from the 91st Psalm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Pardon me just for a moment. From the 91st Psalm. God is very specific about his name. And he, he said in another place, Though they that know his name will put their trust in him. And in the 91st Psalm, here towards the end of the Psalm, it says, Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Why? Because he hath known my name. You see, so if you're running around trying to t call God by the name Yahshua, or the name Yahuwah, or the name Yahushua, then you don't know him, and there's no deliverance for you. Okay, If you think that you can be saved by be being baptized in one of those names, you're greatly deceived, because there is no salvation in those names. Because Peter, the apostle of Jesus Christ, testified of the name of Jesus Christ in Acts 4.12, saying, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The only name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, is the name of Jesus Christ. Christ, Jesus the Christ of God, and that is the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And if you call him by any other name, you don't know him, and he doesn't know you. That's the truth of the matter. May this be a blessing to those of you who love the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen.